Hey everyone, just going to show you how you get started with BuzzTouch to build your first app or iPhone application and Android application. BuzzTouch is a great service because um, you can dynamically change content behind the scenes. So I'll launch into my account and I'll show you where you go to get going. Inside of this um, screen here you can see all of the options and I'm going to go into my applications and I'm going to see um, the list of things that I've produced. Now I'm going to create a new app and I'm going to create a version 2.0 application and the app will be called Pizza Palace. You can call it whatever you like but I'm going to build an application for a pizza restaurant. And I'm going to hit submit. And oh, it looks like someone's already built that one before, so we'll call it Pizza Without a Space Palace. <clears throat> and there we are. We can go to our Applications Control Panel now, and we get the choice to change um, the way in which we want our application to operate. And we do this inside of the layout and tabs. Inside of this section, we've got the ability to have a non-tab layout, which is something that um, is is about uh, not having having more depth than some of the other options. So this is screens that lead to further screens and so on. Or you can have a tab layout. And to give you an example of what they look like, um, I'm going to show you a couple of my app applications that are currently available. So the following application here uses a tab based layout. It has tabs at the bottom and content on the top and this content can lead to further content and so on. So click on the home button will bring up this home screen and then elements on that screen can um, then be clicked on to, to dig deeper. So it sort of simplifies the navigation. Whereas a non-tab layout is something like my PE Apps app which doesn't have the tabs at the bottom but more so uses lists and buttons and um, lists then go into further lists and buttons go into further buttons and so on or you can combine the two. Um, so you can see here clicking on video analysis apps brings up another list of apps and then clicking on one of those brings up another screen. So that is a um, navigation non-tabbed layout. And I think for this app we're going to use a tab layout. So we need to delete that because otherwise it will try and use both. And what we need to do is um, firstly go and oh, we probably have to save that for the time being. Press oh. Save that. Before we do anything we need to create the screens that we link on our tabs. So I'll go back to screens and this is where you produce all the different elements inside of your app. I like to view it as a list view because I think it's easier to see um, what you're creating and what you call it. So we're going to add a new screen and we're going to think about what we want our app to have. We want our app to have um, tabs at the bottom because I want to do a tab based app. So I'm going to create one of those called menu and it's going to be of the plugin type a menu simple menu and that is classed as a simple menu the list of things so what's going to happen is when I click on the tab at the bottom it'll bring up a page that looks something like this in terms of a list and then we can hit OK I then want to have one called contact And the same thing, it's going to be a simple menu. I hit add. And it's added. And then I want to create one called share. And it's also going to be a simple menu. And I hit add. Now, if I go back to that layout screen, what I can now do is go into tab layout and open up the non-tab layout and delete that element so that it doesn't try and use that. 
and in here on tab one, which will be tab one will be the one on the left hand side, be this one here. I can select the screen that I want that to interact with. Now this one, this first tab is going to be um, the home screen, which is default already created for us. So I'll click that. I'm going to call it home. Now the second screen I want to have is the menu. Now by menu, I actually meant it to be um, the menu at that restaurant. So I might just call it pizzas or something like that. The second, or the third tab I want to have is the share, and we'll call it share. The label is what appears on the button, like in this example here it says home and media, that's the label. And the fourth tab I'd like to have is contact, um, you can type it in there or you can select it, um, I'm pretty sure I entered that right, it's the same effect. I call that contact. There we are. We've got our four tabs. We can add a fifth if we like, but I just want to have four. And you can have th three if you desire. And now you get the choice to add a an icon. Now this will bring up a window where you can go and find particular um, icons that you might like to use inside of your application. Now I'll give you a list of um, places where you can get free icons. Usually the size that you want to go after is 32 by 32 pixels. Um, so there's plenty of them out there and I'll be sure to add one. But I'll go ahead now and upload. Um, well, better actually find something. I'll find one of the icons I'd like to use. And I've got mine saved on my computer in a folder. by 32 in dark and in miscellaneous there is a home which will be good for that home screen a little house I press upload there it is I press select and you can see it's now added that tab um, to that particular screen so you go through and you do that to all of your icons uh, all the ones that you want active and then you press the save button. So I'll do that now and then we'll, um, we'll move on. So I've just uploaded the different icons and if I close this now, um, I've only got one added to the home screen menu, but if I want to add the menu one, I just press select and I find the icon that I would like to use for that, which is a list. Um, the share one, I've got an icon really in mind for that, which is a bended arrow and contact um, I've got the classic email mail icon and then I can press save and you can see that the tab 1, tab 2, tab 3 and tab 4 have been saved. Great. So there's our general layout that we're going to use for our application but we need to actually create some content um, behind those um, elements. So if we go back to screens and we have a look at what we've created so far, we've got the home screen, the menu, contact and share. Now on our home screen we can now click on it and we can add rows to that existing um, that existing menu. So I'm going to call one um, welcome. So this will be the welcome section which will appear something that looks like this. It will just say welcome at the top of the screen. And it's going to be a in the form of a custom HTML and text because a welcome should be you know some words or text that goes with it so we'll we'll press <clears throat> press add in a second because we haven't created that welcome screen we get the ability to create it here just by typing it in that space otherwise you can select the screen that you've already made so I'll press add and you can now see that that row has been added here and it's the first in the list. So there's our first element on um, the screen. We probably want to add the actual text to that particular space. So if we click on it, it'll open up um, some more ability to edit that particular option. 
So here it is, it's loading up. And we can delete this, we can paste in everything that we want. And we can hit save. And there's a lot of other options in the bottom of what you want to do to that particular screen. So if we go back to our um, our screens, we've added something to the home screen menu, so that now that people can um, can see that, and it's there, you can see it's called welcome. But we need to add something to the the menu screen. So let's click on it. Now I said that this was going to be called um, pizzas or something like that. I haven't created one called our menu. And it would make sense. I've got the menu in a Word document, so I'm going to add it as a Word doc. And I'm going to hit save or add. And there it is. Now, if I click on our menu, I can find where that um, document is saved. I can upload that document um, to the device. I might just find a document on my, on my computer now. Let's go to Dropbox and I have a Word document there. There we are. Press upload. So this could be the menu or whatever you might choose to, to use. Hit select and it's now added. Press save and that's the menu screen taken care of. If I go back to screens, I can do the same thing for contact. Now what we might like to add here is um, the ability to email us and what we would like to do is create a screen called email us as well and we want to use the send email option and press add now we can see it's created we click on email us and it will prompt us to create the content for that particular screen um, it's asking you well what's the email address do you want to use so it's you put in your email address and what the subject is and hit save. So that means when the user clicks that they are prompted to um, create an email and this information is already added for them. And if you go back to screens again you can see that um, we have the ability, we've added a screen called share. We need to add something to that as well. Um, let's just call share this app and go select. Whoop, forgot one step. I actually haven't created a screen for this, so let's share via um, text and we need to use that that nickname or that option, share via SMS text message. And we just go add and share via text. You've got to check out this restaurant. Press save. So going back now, we can now see that we've we've added our um, items which appear at the tab menu bar, and we've added the content that appears on each of those different screens. And we can add more and more content. So let's have a look at what that would actually look like when we downloaded it. To do that, we need to go back to our Pizza Palace home menu, and we need to add an icon. Now, an icon has to be 72 by 72 pixels wide in order for it to be um, to be used. So I'll just quickly add one that I've prepared earlier. Um, but this is a good thing that you can get students to use. iOS apps, fitness tests. Seventy-two by seventy-two. Hit upload. And for some reason, you need to pretend like you're trying to realign that. Otherwise, it won't let you press save. Press save and done. And it's now added our icon, which you can see there. At this point, you can actually download your source code files. And I'm going to download mine for Xcode. But if you're doing it for Android, you'll download it as an Android app. Press preparing package. And when that is compiled, we can download a zip file um, and open it up. That'll be the use for the next episode.